dogs. We love them in their millions in this country. Big ones, small ones, cute ones, scruffy ones. They live with us, work with us, travel with us, and even help us to live with health challenges. They're an established part of our families and our society in the UK, and it's not for nothing that we're known as a nation of dog lovers. So why are the dogs hitting the headlines for all the wrong reasons? And have we been lulled into a false sense of security by man's best friend? Dog attacks are on the increase. There were over 10 serious media reported incidents last year, with most notably the tragic deaths of 14-year-old Jada Anderson in 2013 and 11-month-old Ava Jane in 2014 here in the North West. In 2013, across the country, there were 6,740 hospital admissions for dog bites, which is an increase of 6%. Last year, in Greater Manchester alone, there were 466 people admitted to hospital with dog bites. Greater Manchester Police have reported that they seized 207 dogs during the past year, with 55 of these dogs being destroyed. In fact, figures suggest that the North West is a hotspot for dog attacks. So should we be concerned? The fact that we have legislation would seem to suggest we should. The current Dangerous Dog Act has five key points that affect the public. A person is prohibited from owning a dog that is bred for fighting. This includes the four banned dogs, the Japanese Tosa, the Fila Brasileiro, the Dogo Argentinio and the Pitbull Terrier. No person shall breed or breed from a dog on this list, sell, exchange or offer such a dog and allow the dog to be without a muzzle or a lead in a public place. If any dog, regardless of breed, is dangerously out of control in a public place, then the owner has committed an offence. The courts may order the destruction of a dog if an offence was committed and order the offender to be disqualified from dog ownership. In a public place, a police officer has the authority to immediately seize a dog that is banned. It's clear that dogs can be a liability in the wrong hands, but what is considered to be a dangerously out of control dog? There isn't a definition of a dangerous dog, but we deal with the Dangerous Dogs Act of 1991. And the definition of a dog being dangerously out of control, which is the offence that we're dealing with under Section 3, is that if a person has a reasonable apprehension that they will be injured by that dog, whether or not they actually are, which is an important piece of legislation, then that dog is deemed to be dangerous under Section 3 of the Act. So in short, if someone is in fear for their safety when a dog approaches or attacks, then that dog is deemed dangerous. So what is it that makes a domestic dog a potential danger? Let's start with breed. Is there such a thing as a bad breed? Banned dogs are those that come from fighting stock, such as pit bulls. The physiological makeup of these dogs gives them a greater capability to cause significant damage than other breeds, although not every dog of that breed will necessarily have an aggressive temperament. You've got to remember that this dog has been bred. They've brought these different breeds together solely for fighting. So when they do decide to bite somebody, they're incredibly efficient. So they are dangerous at that point, perhaps more dangerous than another dog. Equally, some breeds of dogs are fine with people, but don't tolerate other dogs too well, like the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier, for me, personally, is the most dangerous dog on the streets of Manchester at this moment in time. Especially with other dogs. Not necessarily with people, because I, I accept and agree that they do make nice pets with people. But 90% of the jobs that we get reported in Greater Manchester that involve a dog attacking another dog, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier is the offending dog. So the type of breed can dictate to some extent the instinctive behaviour you'd expect from that dog. More importantly, however, it seems the way we rear our puppies can predict problems for the future. fear fueled aggression is quite common in dogs that have been poorly treated or not socialised well enough. Generally accepted guidance and most behaviourists highlight the importance of the socialisation period. Meet Bruce. Bruce is a five-year-old Jack Russell with aggression issues. Bruce experienced physical abuse as a puppy, causing him to fear being handled. He, in turn, uses aggression to tell people, I don't want to be touched. He'd been bought for a teenager who lost interest in him within a couple of weeks and was using him more like a toy than a pet. 
um, the lady instantly, as soon as she realised this, took the dog away from her son and brought him into me to try and find him a new home. A couple of significant incidents happened with Bruce when he was very young. He got some injuries when he was in his first home and at this time, this was when he was in his socialisation period and during that time he learnt to be a little bit afraid um, of people because of the way he was handled and he also picked up some injuries. So not only was he worried about people during this most critical time, he also was worried about people touching him because whenever they touched him, it hurt. Bruce is now having clicker training and being trained to accept yeah, being touched. Jo is confident Bruce will get yeah. better but may always slightly fear being handled Good boy, and well be done. a threat to people. That's the most critical time in the dog's life really. It's the time when it's at the breeders and it's the time when it goes to its first family. Uh, these are also times which can be quite stressful obviously, going away from the, um, everything the dog's already known, going to a new home. They're the times when it goes to the vets and gets its injections, the time when it goes in the car maybe for the first time. So this is really a critical time. So all experiences in this period need to be positive and confidence building. The consensus of opinion in the dog world is that training is important for all dogs, no matter their age. Well, training teaches the dog or the puppy how to follow your commands. It teaches the dog to pay lots of attention to you. Um, it doesn't necessarily stop the dog from becoming aggressive because some dogs learn to use aggression quicker than others. Even the type of training you choose can be important. It's really important that the training classes or the training that you use uses reward-based methods because we've got quite a lot of research now that shows that um, using a punishment-based trainer can encourage your dog to use aggression later on. So it seems that breed, rearing and training all play a part in preventing dog attacks. General agreement is that the responsibility sits fairly and squarely with the owners. Forthcoming changes to the Dangerous Dog Act are designed to reinforce these responsibilities. These changes are that owners will be traceable through compulsory microchipping, which will come into effect in 2016. In England and Wales, if a dog is out of control in a public or private place, and if a dog injures a person or an assistance dog, then offence has also been committed. And when deciding if a dog is a danger to the public, the courts must consider the temperament of the dog, its past behaviour, and whether the owner is fit and proper to be in charge of a dog. The law might be changing, but is it enough? It's obvious that we need changes in the attitudes of dog owners if dog attacks are to be reduced. The advice is clear. Well, you've got to keep your dog on a lead at all times in a public place. That, that's, that's a given. Um, the dog should have some form of identification that is genuine. So, albeit, uh, I said microchipping won't solve the issue, if the details you give are 100% correct, then it's right to microchip your dog. Um, you shouldn't allow children to be on their own with a dog of any breed, for obvious reasons, and you shouldn't allow your dog to stray in the street. So therefore you need to make sure that if you are a dog owner, the garden in which you're going to keep that dog in is secure. And um, obviously insurance is an issue for an individual, but third party liability insurance is a good thing if it's valid. With the advent of handbag dogs and the booming dog accessories business, maybe we could be accused of treating our dogs too much as human beings, causing them stress and anxiety in the process. Perhaps we need to see things from a dog's perspective. Space Dogs is a campaign which encourages owners to do just this. They ensure dogs have the right to their own personal space. If your dog is aggressive or nervous around other dogs, maybe feeling unwell or is in heat, then by wearing the Space Dog's ribbon or coat, you can encourage other dog owners and pedestrians to give your dog a little extra room. If you see somebody with a yellow ribbon on or the coat on and they're obviously trying to cross the road, just slow down a bit or hang on until they cross the road, as it says, to give them a little bit more space. In Turkey, it will soon be illegal to own a dog without first completing compulsory education and training. The 2014 changes in legislation here will help to place a responsibility with the owner. But in a country which prides itself on its love of dogs, could we do more? One thing is for sure, 
If a dog misbehaves, we should look at the owner for the reasons why.